Hey everyone, in this video we are going to go over why when you calculate an XIRR on monthly or quarterly periods, it's different than when you calculate an IRR on those same cash flows rolled up into annual periods. And so I've created a quick spreadsheet here uh, to illustrate why this is. Now you'll notice we have cash flows broken down into monthly periods and then they're rolled up here into annual periods. And you'll see that I've calculated the XIRR value on the monthly, which has come out to 26.32%, and then the annual period, or I've calculated the IRR on the annual periods, which came out to 25.1%. And so what both of these formulas are essentially doing is they are looking to solve for what the discount rate is in the present value formula, so that when you discount back all the cash flows over the period, and you add them together, they equal $100. Now in the monthly period, monthly period cash flow, um, you'll see we have cash, cash being realized every single month. And so XIRR is able to figure out, okay, if I have a dollar month one, I have a dollar month two, month three, month four, and so on and so forth, I need to discount all of these cash flows back over that time period so that when I add them up, it'll equal hundred dollars. While the IRR formula is basically saying all of these cash flows are realized at the end of year one, or the end of year two, or the end of year three, and so I only need to apply the discount rate or the present value formula to the cash flows three times. And so the IRR formula and XIRR formula are a little bit different, so that they can capture time, which again, the IRR is a metric that's based on time. It's a time value metric. And so if that wasn't totally clear, let's go over the actual formulas here for the monthly periods, and then I'll do the same thing for the annual uh, periods. And so what we're going to do is we're going to verify that this XIRR is correct. So I'm going to plug this XIRR into the present value formula, uh, copy and paste the formula down, and add it back up so that this number here will equal $100. So equals the cash flow available in, in February divided by one plus one plus, and here's the portion of the formula that uh, Excel tries to solve. So one plus the XIRR, get a four to the power of, and this is where the XIRR function differs from the IRR function. Uh, because the time is different. So we're going to add days to the days function. So we'll start with the end date, which is February here, and the start date. Let's hit F4, close parentheses, divided by 365. And so that'll be 31 days divided by 365. So let's hit enter. Now you'll see that using this particular discount rate that the dollar in month one is equal to 98 cents. Now, if we copy this down, all of these dollars will be discounted further because they're further out into the future. And as you can see that it goes from 98 all the way down to 51 and then this 78 or this 7487 is the $150 reversion value plus the $1 cash flow. So you'll see if we add them up, that equals $100. So XIR solved for 26.32% IRR, and you'll see that that resulted in a present value of $100. Now for the IRR formula, we'll take our cash flow, divide by one plus the IRR that was solved for to the power of, and now this is just annual. So we'll just put a one up top, that's one year. And let's copy this down. And so you'll see that as a formula it goes on in time. Now it's to the power of two years because we're two years away from when we first acquired it, three years away. And so you add that up, it equals 100. So the XR is able to deal with frequent and uh, even differing dates. Like if we had not every month, maybe we wanted to do month one, month seven, month nine, month 12 it could capture that because again, the formula will capture the days passed from when you first um, acquired the property. So again, our XR in this example is higher. Um, 
than our IRR. Now that might not always be the case, uh, but in this example it is, and I can show you an example of where it wouldn't be. So let's say we have um, negative $20, for example, in month two, but then month 12, we have $22, so that when you add up all of the monthly cash flows, it still equals $12. And you'll see that our XRR actually now is lower at 24.69% than our IRR. Because regardless of the nuance that happened in the month, the XRR is only capturing the $12 or the sum of what happened throughout that period. So if you're looking at uh, an investment and cash flows are being realized on a monthly basis, then the XIRR function using monthly periods is the most appropriate um, function or formula to use for the IRR metric. And if, again, if you're receiving cash flow on an annual basis, IRR. And again, if you want to look at something high level and you want to just directionally understand where the IRR may land, um, then even if you eventually need to get into the monthly details, you could do an annual pro forma and look at the annual IRR and get a good idea directionally of where um, your IRR might land. All right, so I hope that was helpful. Um, and if you have questions, follow up in the comments on YouTube, or you can just reach out on the site. Thanks.